Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I actually got the idea for this from Final Blow Joe, and I will link to his video below. Definitely recommend checking out his channel, especially if you're into sort of sci-fi and that kind of thing. And basically, Joe did this video where he talked a little bit about his reading history and his reading habits, and I wanted to do something a little bit similar. So I'm basically going to talk you through, I guess, my earliest memories of reading and how you know my childhood reading went and how that's shaped my reading today. So I guess one of the one of the earliest memories I have of reading is um, my grandparents used to take books out of the library and record audio books for me, uh, specifically my dad's mum and dad. Uh, they used to get the books out and then they'd record it onto a cassette tape and they'd even get a little bell that they would jingle when it was time to turn the page. And then when I got into bed, I'd get into bed with a book and they'd put one of the cassettes on and I could listen to it like an audio book and I could read along as well. And they used to do that like every time I went to visit them, which was probably once every other weekend, something like that. And they'd go and take out, you know, five or six children's books. Uh, it's actually th my, those grandparents also introduced me to Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, which went on to become my favourite book and really quite important to me as a teenager. That actually happened because my parents both worked full time and I was off school. Uh, I wasn't very well. And so I was staying at my grandparents until I got better and they got some books out to cheer me up. And one of the books they got was Northern Lights and I read it and fell in love with it. And then the next time I visited them, I think they'd got me the next book from the library. Uh, and then I had to wait a while for the third third book as well. Uh, both of my parents have always been pretty big readers. I think probably my dad more than my mum. Uh, my dad reads things like he reads a lot of sci-fi, so things like uh, Asimov and Ursula K. Le Guin. I was kind of surrounded by those. Michael Moorcock, all those books growing up in the you know the really old thin uh, paper paperback uh, like sci-fi classic kind of things. Uh, and then yeah, I mean, he was into fantasy quite a lot as well. Uh, him and my uncle Dave Goode, they used to play, uh, like, uncle is in. He's not my real uncle, he's my dad's best friend. But uh, we used to play Dungeons and Dragons when I was little. So he was into that kind of stuff. My mum, I guess, reads quite a lot of crime fiction. Uh, her and my uncle Carl on my mum's side are uh, both big Agatha Christie fans. So I think that's where that comes in. My dad and my brother both big uh, red, uh, like well, red dwarf fans. So I was thinking of the novelizations of Red Dwarf, uh, but I was also thinking of Discworld. So they're big Discworld fans, which is where uh, where I suppose that comes in. So really, when I was a kid, I did have a lot of my own books, and I used to reread a lot. But we used the library quite a bit as well. Um, Especially when I was younger, I think, when I sort of got to about 11, 12, and it was clear that I was quite a big reader, I started to collect books a bit more. Unfortunately, I later sold them in my late teens when uh, I discovered alcohol and I hadn't got a job. So I sold a lot of my old books, unfortunately, but I've, I've since rebuilt my collection. At primary school, I was always a bit of a a bit of a geek, like a bit of a bookish geek, although I was kind of almost known as more of a maths geek as well, even during secondary school. But there was like during secondary school, we did uh, our English teacher, we had made us basically, we had to write uh, little book reviews for each book we read. And I was writing like three or four of these things a week and everyone else was like doing one a term, you know? Um, but also I think that was kind of good practice because I now review every book that I read on my book blog. Sort of during my mid-teens, that's when I first discovered like Thomas Harris and like The Silence of the Lambs and those books. And I guess also then I, I just went into more, um, I guess more of the classics. So that's when I kind of started picking up things like The Catcher in the Rye and like Hemingway. Uh, I think that was when I first read Breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, especially kind of then going into my later teens when I was at college. And also again, lots of Discworld at this time. A bit of fantasy here and there as well. Um, and then I went to university and then that's where it really changed for me and I really started to, that's when I got into, you know, uh, the Beats, so uh, Jack Kerouac, Alan Ginsberg, uh, William Burroughs, read a lot of those while I was there. Uh, I also got into, that's when I got into Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and the Sherlock Holmes books through um, my uh, London in Literature module at university. Uh, we also read like Virginia Woolf, um, some Will Self, so it was a real mix there. And because... At uni I studied creative writing so I was there with other writers learning about writing so I started to hear about a lot more books as well so that's I suppose where the next evolution in my reading came I can't remember for example some of my favorites now like Stephen King where I first read him but I think that was at around uni and I think it was The Shining and it, I, it didn't particularly stick with me and then I picked up another one of his books later and that's when I like really fell in love with his stuff 
and obviously like my reading taste is still changing now I, I suppose the next big thing that shaped my reading taste was um, when I started my book blog which was in or, or April 2013 I think and when I started that people started offering me free books for review and occasionally I would say yes and I think that just exposed me to a lot more diversity especially with people sending me things like translated fiction uh, and so that kind of helped me to further refine my taste and to get more of an idea of the kind of stuff I like. I used to say yes to probably 20-30% of review requests and now it's probably 5-10% to 10 um, because I refined my tastes through through running the blog. And then of course then I joined booktube and so I think that had an effect in terms of I started to pick up a few more books that other people on booktube have recommended. I think this is kind of coming into my habits now as well but I have this this big list of books I want to buy and it has I think 1800 or something probably more actually I'm currently updating it at the moment and so there are a lot of authors like Asimov for example I just want to read every Asimov book like every Stephen King book every Agatha Christie book every Graham Greene book and so they all go on this big old list and every now and then I need to update it so I'm currently updating it based on I've written my memoirs recently uh, which are like about my my life in books which is also why I've kind of been thinking about this this subject and um, because I've written those memoirs and it's got like an index at the end of all of the books and authors that are mentioned and because I've just finished my first draft of it I can now go through that index and I'm checking there and like no authors that I only read once and didn't check out again like Blake Crouch for example I read him recently and he was great so I'm probably going to read all of Blake Crouch's books now so that's why I start to put on my list. Uh, I buy myself six new books at the start of each month. I get two like series books like you know Agatha Christie or even Stephen King, although they're not series, they're by an author that I've read before. Two books by authors that are new to me and then two indie books. But then I do a lot of charity shopping as well. I keep all of my books too uh, and so my library is ever growing. And yeah, I, I just, I like books. I mean, I think books have played a really important part into in who I am today, especially, you know, my identity. I am a writer. That's what I do for, for a living. It's also what I do as my passion with the books that I, you know, the novels that I write and stuff like that. So it's just, they're just a very important, like, part of who I am. And that, I think that's why I keep them around, because it's nice to be able to walk around, especially where I've got them, like, winding through my house. Like, I'll walk around my house and I'll just, my eye will alight on different books and it will bring back the memory of where I was when I read it or why I read it or what I learned from it. So yeah, I, just reading. Reading is good and you should do more of it. <laughs> so yeah, that in a nutshell is my reading history. I didn't want this to be too long, but at the same time I hope this has kind of given you an idea of of where I kind of came from as a reader. I've pretty much always read for as long as I can remember and I, I've never really, even as a teenager when a lot of people kind of drop off reading and then they rediscover it like late teens, early twenties, I was just reading all through my teens, you know? So, so yeah, once I started reading I couldn't stop. So anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments. Let me know a little bit about your reading journey. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.